Okay, you know what? I'm going to get started. Um, you're going to see me look on the side once in a while because I've got two monitors. So um, I can see my screen in front of me, but all of you on the side monitor. So if I'm looking like this, that's because I'm actually looking at you. <laughs> so it doesn't make sense because I should be looking at the camera, but um, you're on my right. So I'm going to share my screen. So your whole screen is going to be taken over and we're just going to start the presentation. Now, can everybody see the main screen? Okay. Perfect. So, um, basically, this is the introduction session to all the um, learning or teaching uh, technologies that we are using. Now, what we're going to see today, first of all, a little bit of word of welcome, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, I'm also going to present to you the, the staff that's uh, with us on the call. We'll talk about some resources that you might need. Um, I'll do a little bit of an introduction on the two technology as well as presentation on the two technologies. And then we'll end the presentations. Now, at the end, if for some reason you weren't able to log in or that you had problems, just wait till everybody's gone and we're going to help you out um, individually. A bit like they do on the airplane. If you can't deboard the plane, then you just wait and people come and help you at the end. So we're going to be doing that. So um, if you have any questions, as I said earlier, don't, don't hesitate. I'll show you how to um, get my attention. There's a few different ways we can do that. So first things first, um, we are recording this session. So legally, um, we have to tell you that we are recording. We are recording it. Uh, not to blackmail you, but um, we actually want to put this on uh, for training purposes. We are also going to share it with other teachers. And so people that have missed this session can go back and look at it and see how it works. Now, if you don't want to be recorded, that is your right. Uh, you can turn off your camera. We don't recommend it for reasons that I'll explain a bit later on, but you can turn off your camera should you want to. Uh, now, on your side, you're not allowed to record us unless you ask our permission. So if you are recording this uh, or you want to record us, no problem, but just ask your permission first. Does that make sense so far? Yes? Okay. Okay, moving on. So first of all, my name is Charles. I'll be the presenter today. Uh, this is my email address. So if you have trouble, um, you're trying to log in, it doesn't work, you have any kind of problem whatsoever or questions, uh, don't hesitate. Just uh, send me an email and um, I'll be happy to help you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to copy this email and put it in the uh, chat that we'll see in a few minutes. So if you don't want to write it down, I'll actually write it down for you and you'll be able to... Um, just copy and paste it. Okay, sorry, I'm having a bit of problem with my screen here. Um, okay, so the other people that we have on call today, we have uh, Shana. Good morning, everyone. You'll notice that Shana wrote teacher next to her name. I'll show you how to do that. And we um, also have Gwen. Good morning, everyone. Hi. Good morning, Gwen. Hi. And we have Maud, who just came back in the call. Yeah. Hello, Hal. <laughs> nice to meet you. So the four of us are here to help you. If you have any questions, uh, we'll, we'll be able to help you out. Hey, I made it. Aha. Uh -huh. I... Okay. That was that yeah. Good. good. There's someone here. Um, who said that? That's, That's Stan uh, Stanley Lake. Okay. Hi, Stanley. Hi. And Joe DeRush is here too. Okay. Perfect. I'm gonna mute. Um, so moving on to resources. Um, if you need help, uh, you have my email that I just uh, and for those of you that are, that just came back in, my name is Charles. Uh, here's my email address. Um, again, I'll be sending it to you in the chat in a few minutes. Now, the other resources we have is the help desk. So we have Moodle, 
at uh, edu.etsb.qc.ca. Um, so if you have any um, questions, they can also help you. So you can use my email or that email address. There's also a page that exists here. It's actually not quite up and running yet. Uh, you will have to apologize for that in advance. Um, because of COVID, we had to put this thing together really quickly. So um, in Moodle, which is something I'll talk about in a few minutes, but it's basically a virtual school. And <clears throat> as it is right now, it's still under construction. So um, it's a bit like walking the physical building that's under construction. So we are working on it while we're teaching. So bear with us and be patient, but it, it is up and running. It's just not completely there yet. Now, for those of you that just joined in, um, you should have been sent this manual here. This is the manual for the class that I'm um, teaching today. If you haven't received it, uh, don't worry, we'll send it to you. And it'll also be available on the uh, help desk page. So that has everything I'm gonna talk about today and, and a lot more. Now, there's also a version of the manual. Right now, the latest version is version 1.5. So um, when you go to the page, always verify what version of the manual it is and what version you have. And if you don't have the latest version, you can download the newest version. Okay, so we have two technologies that we're gonna look at today, Zoom and Moodle. Now, Zoom, you're on Zoom right now, so you're probably a little bit familiar with it. It's basically a platform for, for online um, chat services. So it's something that kind of exploded with the COVID situation. It's not a software that was basically known really before. And because of uh, the confinement, everybody jumped on it. So a lot of people are using Zoom. Now, I have questions about Zoom every, every time I make um, one of these classes. Uh, people saying, oh, it's not secure. Well, we had, they, they had a lot of issues in March with security on it, but it has been solved since then. So it actually is a lot more secure now. Um, Zoom is basically what we use for the classroom. So uh, we'll be able to um, teach you with Zoom. We'll be able to see your, your faces, which I can see right now. Um, we'll be able to interact with you, ask you questions. We'll... Uh, there's a, a whiteboard that we can write on and that you can also write, write on. We can uh, show you videos. Um, it basically becomes like a real classroom. Now, when you need to go to your classroom, um, sorry, um, Stanley, can you mute your microphone, please? Remove, mute, mute. mute. At the we'll bottom, try. <laughs> on the bottom right of your screen, there should be a little mute video. Thank you. Sorry, mute audio. Um, we'll send you the link for Zoom whenever we have a class, but also in Moodle, you'll have a link for Zoom that will let you click it and join the class. So I've been talking about Moodle a little bit. So what is Moodle? Well, it's what we call a learning management system or LMS. And it's basically the platform that we use to, to teach you. It's, it's a virtual school, if you want. So it, it acts both as, as a virtual school and as a virtual um, a classroom. So in Moodle, you'll find everything you need for your courses. You'll, need, you'll have your schedule, your resources, uh, links, videos, assignments, your tests, your results. You'll have access to um, textbooks, exercise, and access, as I said again, lots of resources. So Moodle is where you go to before your class to join the class, but it's also where you go back to, well, to chat with other students, to ask questions about teachers, to look at files you need to, need to look at, to download the exercise and assignments and so on and so forth. So that's basically, these are the two technologies. Now, the reason we chose them is because they're easy to use. And as you'll see today, it's a bit of a quick overview, but it's pretty easy to follow. And the great thing about Moodle and Zoom is that the more you use them, the more familiar you get with them and the less um, challenging it will be if you have a bit of a trouble. Now, some general guidelines here before we get started properly. So first of all, when you log in, I want you to use your real name or your full name. I see most of you have that, which is great. 
And if you want to change it, I'll show you how to do it in a few minutes. Uh, second thing is we do not recommend using a phone. Uh, most people live on their phones right now, uh, but the problem is because this is a school environment, we'll have to show you lots of files, documents, video, we'll, re we'll, we'll require on-screen feedback, we'll have text on the screen like, I'm, like I have right now. So on a phone, you're not going to be able to, to do all of that. So it's important to have access to at the very least a tablet and ultimately a computer. Now, if you don't have a choice and you have a phone, please take your phone and put it horizontally. That way you'll see more of our screen and you'll see, we'll see more of you as well. The second thing which all of you have done already is great, which is muting your microphone. Um, that prevents all these background noise that could be a bit distracting. Now, here's a little tip for you. If you need to talk, let's say I asked you a question, instead of unmuting, you can actually hold down the space bar. So if you hold down the space bar on your, on your um, keyboard, it'll allow you to ask a question or talk, providing that you keep your hand on the uh, space bar. As soon as you're done, you let it go, it'll go back to being muted. So why don't we try it out right now? Hold on the space bar and just say hi. 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 There you go. Hi. 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 Hello. So this is great. It works. Uh, now, as I said earlier, we, we don't want you to stop your video. Uh, but, I mean, if you really don't have a choice, uh, you can do it. But the reason why is because when we're teaching, we actually want to see your faces. It's important for us to, to be able to look at you since we don't have a physical presence in the classroom. Uh, as teachers, it's important to see how you're reacting if, you're, if you understand what we're saying. So when we just see a blank screen with your name, we have no idea, A, if you're there, B, if you're listening, or C, if you actually understand what we're saying. So please do not stop your video. Um, also, always use Zoom in full screen mode. That way you'll see more of the screen and you'll have less distraction as to, uh, you know, checking your email or your social media while we're teaching. Uh, if you need to ask a question, as I said before, but some of you weren't here yet, uh, just raise your hand. Put it as close to the camera as possible. That way we can see movement and uh, we'll be able to help you. You can also use reactions and the chat features, which would, they're both things that we're going to look at in a few minutes. So how's it going so far? Good? Perfect. I see somebody already gave me a thumbs up. Perfect. Okay. So let's talk about your name and how we got in here and how it works. So first of all, here, a few of you might have seen this, but often when you click on the link to, to go to your class or to come to this meeting here, you didn't see the screen here. But if you did, this is where you can put your name, of course. So when you first join in, you probably had this little screen here that has your name on it. Now, it also has an area here to put a name. That's the name that appears on the screen. So if you fill that out, then basically I'm going to see your name and everybody's going to see your name. Now, if you didn't do that, some people sometimes have the name of their phone or something. I'll show you how to change that. So I'm sorry, I'm, I'm actually using screenshots here to show you Zoom because unfortunately, I can't show you Zoom while I'm inside of Zoom. You wouldn't be able to see my screen. So I'm actually using a screenshot. So if you want to change your name, all you have to do is click on the participant. See, right now I'm showing one because it's a screenshot, but I can tell you we're actually 17 participants right now, which is probably what you're seeing. So if you click on that, this will open up this little sidebar here. And if you hover ab above your name, what will happen is that you'll see the mute and more. If you click on more, the very first option up here is to rename. So if you click on that, that will allow you to change your name. So if, you, if it has your name of your phone or something, you can actually put your full name in here. Uh, the thing that I'm going to ask you to do at this point is to put your name correctly. That's good. But also let us know if you're in the French class or English class. That'll help us a lot. So you'll notice that Shauna has written teacher next to her name. Uh, so did Gwen. So you can just write French or English. That way we know what class you're in and we'll be able to uh, help you. 
Yes, um, have a question, Stanley? You're muted. Okay, I, so. My problem is that I'm on the phone. I couldn't get ah. the computer going, but I'll have it going the next time. Okay, so don't worry about it on the phone. It's a little bit harder to, um, to rename yourself. But for everybody else, let okay. me just show you again because I haven't seen any French or English show up. Basically go over participants, hover above your name, uh, click on the more button, click on rename, and just put your name there with, followed by either French or English to let us know what class you're enrolled in. I want to see if you can get this working here because yeah. that's a preference. Okay. okay. Um, Stanley, I'm going to ask you to mute again, please. Okay. So now that we've done that, I'm going to talk about the uh, Zoom interface. Now, the first thing we have is the, um, the toolbar at the bottom here. Now, the toolbar, you might not see all the different icons that I'm showing right now. The reason is, is I'm the one who uh, instigated this call, so I have more options than you do. So you might not have all of them, but you're going to see them eventually. So on the very bottom right, we have the mute button and the stop video buttons. You are familiar with those since you're muted, so you've already used them. And if you click the up arrow, it'll let you go to your options. So you'll have options about how we see you or what kind of uh, microphone you're using, so on and so forth. You might have noticed I'm actually using a, a professional recording microphone here. So I had the choice between the microphone on my computer or this microphone here. Uh, we have security, which I'm not gonna look at, but basically that lets you um, remove somebody. If somebody is being offensive or something, you can actually kick them out and you can do a few more things. Under participant, which you've clicked already, uh, that will show you a list of everybody that's in this call. The chat, if you click on chat, basically that will open up a chat area that will let you talk to other people. We're going to look at that in a few minutes. Shared screen here allows me to share my screen, but I can also give you permission to share your screen. So teachers can share the screen so they, they can show you something, but it can, they can also say, well, show me what you see on your screen. Uh, let's say we do an, um, a test or something. That way we can see what you wrote down. The record button I talked about a little bit earlier. We are recording this session. Um, you do have to ask permission if you want to record us. Um, there's no objections really. We'll, we'll usually give you permission unless that unless we're doing something sensitive. Uh, breakout rooms. This is great. Uh, it's a feature that allows us to um, create different groups. So if we have 20 students, we can divide you in groups of three or four, and then we can assign a different teacher, or I can give you assignments based on your strength, and then I can visit all these different breakout rooms. So we'll talk about that later on. And then we have reactions. Uh, again, I'll show you that just next. So under reactions, if you click on that, you're gonna have two different icons here. So the first one is a hand clap, and the second one is a thumbs up. So if I'm asking a question and I wanna know, did you, did you understand or is that okay? You can give me a little thumbs up so that way I know that you've understood and you're following. See, Sean has done so. Uh, Joe has done so already. So if you want to click and give me a little thumbs up, everyone. Perfect. Good. So I got a few blank screen here that, has, that don't have any thumbs up. Oh, there we go. There's one. Um, Sandra, nothing from you. And Kasim. Hi, Kasim, by the way. Okay, so these are the main reactions, but they're basically, I don't understand why Zoom did this this way, but they have those two as the main reactions, but there are more reactions. If you look at my screen here, when I'm circling, when you click on participants, it's above the chat feature, you'll notice that you've got more icons in here. Those are also reactions or feedback. You get the little yes or no, very practical as a teacher if we're teaching you something, you can tell us if, did you understand? Yes, did you understand? No. So I can see a list of all your reactions. You can also ask me to go slower or go faster. You can give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can hand clap as well. You can ask for a coffee break or a timeout. 
So if you need to go to the washroom or you can click on a little timeout icon, that way I can see on, next to your name that oh, you're not there presently. I can see that Gwen has put a little uh, coffee icon. So give me a, a yes or no or a thumbs up or faster, slower, just so I can see that it's working. Good. Yes, uh, Sidi, you have a question? I do not have the other icons or I do not see the other icons on my screen that you're telling me about reactions and all those ones on the side that you have your mouse on right now. Okay, click on participants. And under the list of the name of the participants, you should see that. Yes. Perfect. Okay, again, if you're on the phone, it, it'll be a bit harder for you to see those if you- No, don't. no, it's a, it's a computer, but I got it. Perfect, no, no, but I mean for other students. Okay, If, if Thank you're you. on the phone, you might have a hard time seeing all of those. Okay, good, so most of you have clicked on it, so great. So next, I wanna talk about uh, full screen mode. Now the full screen mode, again, is very efficient for two reasons. First, it allows you to see more of us, so more of what we're showing you, and it also, prevents distraction from seeing other things in the background. So to do so, you can go, I'm just gonna minimize a little bit here. Um, right there, what I'm circling right now on my screen, on the top um, right of your screen, there's a little square icon. If you click on that, that will enter full screen mode. So it'll take over your whole screen. There's a few ways to do it. You can do it that way. Um, you can also um, double click your screen to go in and out of full screen mode. So if you double click in the middle of your screen anywhere, it'll actually go into full screen mode or it will shrink out of full screen mode. You can also, once you're in full screen mode, you can press the escape key on your keyboard or you can go back to the little square which will now say exit full screen mode. So there's a few ways to do it, but I find the easiest, fastest ways to just double click your screen and you'll be able to go in and out of full screen mode. Now reactions we've talked about, let's talk about the chat feature. Now the chat feature is um, a great feature in here. Uh, if you click on chat, it will mostly divide your, your sidebar here in two. So you'll have the participant on top and at the bottom you'll have a little chat area. You can toggle on and on between them by either clicking participant or chat, one of them might disappear. So when you wanna chat, by default, what I'm circling right now is that it'll send your reply to everyone. So if you type a question in here, you type a message, sorry, everybody's going to see that message. Now, if you wanna send it to say just me or just Gwen or Shauna or, or any one of the other students, all you have to do is click here and select the name of the person that you wanna chat with. So that allows you to chat with just one person. Let's say for example that, um, uh, somebody asks a question and you know the answer, but you don't want to stop or interrupt anyone. You can just pick their name, give them a quick answer, and we can move on. So right now, I want you to leave it to everyone, and I want everybody to uh, send me a little hello, and I'm just going to write hi myself. So there we go. Perfect. I got lots of highs and hello, good morning and somebody send it to me privately. Once you send some, somebody something privately, be, be, be careful because if you try to send another message after, it'll automatically wanna send it just to that person. So you might be wanting to send something for everyone, but by default, the last person that sent you something, you can only reply to them. So just make sure you put it back to everyone afterwards. And by the way, you've, yeah, no, that's a feature that I'm seeing, but uh, once you're hosting a chat on Zoom, you can actually uh, talk to everybody in the waiting lobby or just everyone in the call. So if you see two different options, uh, don't, be, uh, don't be afraid. Any questions for the chat feature? So I promised you I was gonna send you my email in the chat feature, so let me just write it down. So that's one of the things we can do. Oh, actually I sent you, that's not the, I made a typo, sorry. 
So don't use that email, there's a typo in it. Okay, the second one is correct. The first one on top is not correct. So um, I'm not gonna reply to that one since I won't have access. Now, I'm also going to put you the link of Moodle, which we're gonna look at next. So you'll, when we're ready to go to Moodle, you'll just click on the link here. So see, that's one of the features we can use with chat. We can give you a, a link. We can put a file in there that you can download. We can do a few things with that. Now, the next thing I need to talk about is shared screen. Um, is, this is something I've been using. That's why you can see my whole screen in here. And when you're in shared screen, if I give you permission and I ask you to take over the screen, you need to get out of that. And to get out of a shared screen, you'll notice there's a little stop share button up here in red. So if I say share your screen, I give you permission to do so. And when you're done, don't forget to click stop share because otherwise you're still holding the, the full screen. The other thing I wanna talk about uh, very quickly is the view mode. Um, you can choose between speaker view and a gallery view. So if you want, if you have a slowdown on your computer because you have a slow connection, you can go into um, what we call speaker view. Speaker view only shows you the person that's talking as opposed to everyone. The gallery view will show you everybody that's on the column in a little strip, whether it's horizontal or vertical, depending on your setting. Uh, you can change that to speaker view, which only shows you one video at a time. Therefore, it'll be faster if you're on a slow connection. Any questions so far? Yes, I have a question. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, we're going to leave the meeting and try to get back on the computer. Otherwise, okay. we'll join you this evening. Perfect. Okay, we'll see what Thank we can you. do. Thank you. Okay. So sharing your screen, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the whiteboard. So I'm actually going to stop my sharing the screen. And the whiteboard is a very cool function. It's, it's a little bit like a school board. So it allows us to write on it, but it also allows you to write on it. So let me just start that up. And you're gonna see a whiteboard in the middle of your screen. I'm gonna have it take the whole screen. And now, in order for you to be able to contribute, um, sorry, contribute with me here and actually use the, uh, the whiteboard, you're gonna need to go up here on the top. See, um, I don't know if you can see, there's a green bar in here at the very top of your screen. You have a green bar and next to that, there's a little gray area and it allows, it, I, I can't see it, Shauna, because I'm in the wrong mode, but what does it say exactly? You're muted. Still can't hear you. It says view options. Okay. So you'll notice a little, there's a, there's a little timer or something here and next to it, there should be a view options. It's a little gray button. If you click on that, you'll be able to select. Um, annotate. Annotate. Thank you very much. So once you select that, then you'll have this bar show up here, this, this toolbar. Um, just give me a thumbs up if everybody sees that. Thank you, Sidi. So is everybody seeing the, the toolbar? And somebody's already started to, to draw here. It looks like a hard, oh, a red line. Um, so let me show you how to use this toolbar here before you continue doing so. So the first thing you wanna do is go to format, which a lot of you have done already because you can pick a color in here. Now, as a teacher, I might tell you, okay, I'm going to write in blue. If you have to write, write in green. And if I correct you, I'll correct you in red. So we might ask you to color code. Otherwise, you pick a color. And then what you can do with that, you can also under format, pick a size of text. And so if, when you write, you'll, you'll use that size of text and that color that you chose. Um, you can also under spotlight, you can select an arrow. The arrow is very cool because it lets you put your name next to something. So I know who wrote something. Um, you can also take select and move things around if you need to. You could um, draw as a lot of you are doing right now. 
So it basically, you can't find a thumbs up. A thumbs up is under at the bottom of your screen under um, reactions. Oh, but it might have disappeared. So if it disappeared, you can always go to more at the top and you should be able to go back to your, um, well, you're probably not going to see what I'm seeing right now, but basically you should be able to go back to your participants. Oh, I got somebody that likes this. So is everybody able to, uh, to put a few things on the screen? Don't forget, it's at the very top where it's green. There's a little gray, gray button that lets you uh, annotate. That will get you that bar here. Perfect. <laughs> By the way, if you make a typo in your text, you don't have to cross it out. You can actually just go back into your text and, and change that. Perfect. So I'm just going to stop the sharing of your screen here. Everybody's getting that. So that's, again, a way that we can interact with you as, as from teachers to student. Now, very quickly, I'll talk about some options. Um, we're not going to look at the option, but there's a lot of them. I'm just going to show you where they are, and you can have fun with that later. So if you click, the best way to do it is to click on that little green shield icon on the very top um, left of your screen here, and that will come up with your settings. Uh, when you click on the green shield, it usually goes directly to statistics, but you have access to general. You can change your skin tone, uh, video, audio. You can share your screen here and, and define how it works. You can set up a virtual background. I don't know if you've seen, sometimes people are on the beach. Um, you can access your profile and a lot of things in here. Again, we're not going to spend time in here, but you can have fun a bit with that later on and just look at all the different settings. You can't break anything. So just look at things. And if you have questions, you can always email me to, um, to get an answer, hopefully. Good. So that kind of brings us to the end of Zoom for now. And next thing I want to show you is how to use Moodle. Now, to use Moodle, um, what you're going to do is you're going to go back to your chat and click on the link that I sent you. So it's basically a moodle.etsb.qc.ca. Um, but if you click on the link, it'll actually open up uh, the website. So I'm going to show you my screen and show you what that looks like. Okay, does everybody see that on my screen? Okay, now are you able to go to it on your screen? Remember, if you're in full screen mode, you can always double click your screen to minimize zoom, and then you, you should see the, the, the website. Perfect. CD, I like that you give me a thumbs up every time. That way I know you're following. So everybody else, you can do that too. Remember, if when it works, just thank you, Kasim. You can give me a thumbs up, and I know that you're there. Good, lots of thumbs up. Nice. It's funny, those thumbs up are yellow. I feel like I'm in The Simpsons. Everybody's yellow. OK, so. Um, as I said, Moodle is basically, it's, uh, it's inside a website, so everybody has access to it, but it's an actual learning management system, so it allows us to um, create courses and, and interact with you and share documents and so on and so forth. Again, as I said earlier, it's, it's fairly easy to use, so we're going to spend maybe 20 minutes in here and uh, we should be done. So the first thing you're going to do is you are going to need to log in. Now, the login process is fairly straightforward but there's quite a few steps required so on the very top right of your screen you should see a little blue login button i want you to click on login now once you've done so you should see this screen show up now i'm assuming most of you or all of you have never been to moodle before so this would be your first time so that what you have to do here is click the create new account button and what this will do is it'll let you create 
an account. So if you haven't done so already, just click on create new account. Now, if I've lost a few of you, don't worry. You just click the blue login button on the very top right. You select create new account, which will bring you to this page right here. Now, um, before you write your username and password, we get this pretty much every uh, session. Um, please write it down somewhere on a piece of paper. So if you have maybe on the guide here, um, you can use the front page or something, just write down what username you chose and what password you chose. Because inevitably the first class comes around and people can't join in because they can't remember what their username was and what their password was. Uh, you're probably like me, I've got about 15 or 20 different passwords depending on the website, some of them require, this one has requirements. It has to have eight character at least for your password, at least one digit, at least one upper and lower case, and at least one non-alphamerical character such as a, a question mark or a star. Or, so you have, you have to have at least that for your password. So pick a username. Typically this could be just your name. It has to be all lowercase, unfortunately. Then you'll need to take, sorry, you'll need to uh, type your email address twice just to make sure we got it right. Your first name, your last name, the city that you're in right now, and you can leave Canada as the country. Now, when you're done uh, with this, do not press cancel. It's a little bit tempting because it's a big red button. You just want to click on it. But once you're done, click on create my new account. So I'll give you a few minutes and I'll keep talking while you're doing that. But once you click on create my new account, here's what's going to happen. You're going to get a confirmation um, screen that will tell you that it has sent you an email. So the next step is to go to your email program, such as Hotmail or Gmail or whatever email you're using. You're going to need to find that email that was sent to you. You're going to need to click on the link to confirm. That's going to bring you back to this website and it will let you in correctly. So again, once you fill that out completely, create my new account, you get a confirmation text, you go to your email program, and you click on the link that was sent to you. It'll be sent from a Moodle, and um, just follow the link, it will bring you back in here, and you'll be subscribed to Moodle. Uh, by the way, just for security purposes, uh, we're never going to ask you for your password or um, credit card or any information. So if you do receive an email from Moodle saying, uh, what's your password? Again, do not reply. That means we have, we've never had that, but just to be on the safe side. Now, I want thumbs up. Who was able to come back in to Moodle, was able to complete the registration process. Pizan, that's good. Uh, Charisma, we got Afrin, okay. If it doesn't work, let us know, we'll help you. Unfortunately, the thumbs up only stay there for a few seconds. So um, Again, if you have trouble, maybe put your hand uh, closer to the camera so we can help you. There's four of us, so we can actually help you with the process. So in the meantime, I'm going to continue. For those of you that have logged in, I'm just going to log in myself. And I'll meet you back in here in a second. It's so quiet, I, I, I can't hear you guys since you're all muted. Um, everybody's still hearing me, right? Yes. Good, 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 perfect. Okay, so how many people are back to this page here? Okay. So that's about one third of you. So I'm gonna wait a little bit longer for, um, before continuing. Uh, hello, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. I was holding the space bar down, but it doesn't seem to be working. 
uh, I, I did this earlier on the uh, using the PDF. Actually, I think I've logged in, but I'm not sure. But okay. Anyways, okay. I, 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 when I hit your link, it just automatically booted me into the into my profile. So. Oh, okay. Good. Good. So it looks like looks like it's got a cookie there somewhere. Okay. Perfect. So don't worry. You're there. Spacebar is not working. Okay. I'm I'm going to mute myself. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so most of you should be here by now. So if you're not, uh, I'll give you a few minutes to catch up while I'll explain um, basically um, the user interface inside of Moodle. So the user interface is what we call um, the navigation system, what you use to, to move around a website or in this case in Moodle. So up here, we've got the uh, navigation bar. It's got home, which is this page right here. You can always come back to it by clicking on home or clicking on the logo above. The dashboard is kind of a, a page that we put everything in. We'll put notification, we'll put your courses, the events coming up, uh, your chats, the forum, all of it is in the dashboard. Events is if we have, we're gonna try to put all the classes, your classes in the events calendar so that you know when your next course is going to be. But right now it is still under construction. My course, if you go there, you'll notice that you don't have any course. It will say you're not enrolled. So we're gonna do the enrollment in a few minutes. The help desk is the page that I was pointing you at. Uh, again, right now it's under construction, but eventually the, um, this manual here will be under help desk. So you'll be able to go there, you'll be able to see video. We'll, we might put this video in, in there as well. So we'll put lots of resources that can help you, but as of now, it's still under construction. So that's the navigation bar. The other navigation bar, if you want, is the one that, is, that pertains to you. If you go on the very top right of your screen, you'll notice your name here. See on the top right. And if you click on your name, you're gonna have a drop-down menu that has more options. Again, it lets you get back, go back to the dashboard. It also gives you your profile, your grades, your preferences, a calendar, and the option to log out at the end. So. All of that will be in here. So we're gonna come back to it a little bit later. I'm just gonna show you a bit more here. Um, you have this hide block feature and full screen feature. Full screen will basically have the website take the whole screen. And if you want to remove that, you can go back to standard view, which I personally prefer because I can see a bit more without having to look at the whole screen. You can hide the blocks or show the blocks which are down here. It basically shows you the navigation view. So if I scroll down a bit, I've got courses, you don't yet. When you have courses, they'll show up here. You have site announcement, if we have something to let you know, we'll put it in here. And you've got a secondary navigation that you get by hiding or revealing blocks. So it's a bit like the same the navigation bar on top, it lets you navigate a different way. And you get a bit more information about your classes and specific, um, basically specific courses within your class. And at the very bottom, you've got all the different course categories. These are all the different classes we teach and we teach a lot of them. So if you click on one of them, you'll notice that, for example, I clicked on adult education. We've got English, French, math, sciences, social sciences. So you can go and look at all of these, um, these classes, how many credits they are, how long they are, and so on and so forth. If you've moved around and you don't know how to go back, you again, click on the logo or the home button, and this will bring you back to the very first page. Now, is everybody inside of Moodle right now? Was everybody able to complete the registration process? I'm assuming yes, so I'm gonna continue. So the next thing we're gonna look at is how to edit your profile. I want you to go on the very top right where your name is, You'll notice I've got a picture there. I'll show you how you can put a picture. So if you click on your name, you go to edit profile. Again, if you're on a phone, this will be a lot more difficult for you, but hence the reason we're asking you to be on a computer or a tablet. So click on edit profile and you should see this screen show up. Now under this screen, most of it is already filled out because you filled out your... Uh, enrollment. So you've got uh, your name, your last name, your email address, and 
this is an important one here, the email display. This is how you select who sees your email. By default, everybody can see your email. And I mean everybody, every single student from every single class, uh, all the teachers, all the uh, staff. Now, if you don't want people to see your email, there's three different choices here. Again, the default is allow everybody to see my email. The second one at the very bottom is to allow only people that are in the same class as me to see my email. Good option, that way you can keep in touch with your classmates. Um, the other one is if you do not want your email to be seen, hide my email from non-privileged users. I hate the word privilege, especially with everything that's going on today in the world. Uh, a lot of people are privileged. Uh, what they mean by a privileged user is basically the staff, so the teachers and the administrators of the site. So the other students wouldn't be able to see your email if you want to keep it private. Now you'll have your city here, your country. You can also determine um, uh, your time zone, basically that's by default. Um, so sorry, you can describe who you are. So I, I put a little description of here of who I am. And in a few minutes, we'll go to view profile. So we'll see what people see of yourself there. Um, so it's, you can put a little bio here. The cool thing is you've got a little toolbar here that lets you do a lot of things. You can put things in bullet points and number, but you can also have links to a website or something. You can put images, uh, you can insert audio video files, you can record audio, you can record video, you can have a little uh, welcome message and you can put files in here so people can go and grab files. Uh, let's say you wanna put your resume in here, you can put your resume in here. Um, as a teacher, I always tell my student that um, if you're studying something, your classmates are basically a way into a workforce because sometimes um, somebody will get a job and they'll say, oh, we need somebody else at work. And by knowing other students, you can get jobs, you can get connection. This is a, a good way to have connection. So putting your resume in here is not a bad thing to do. Now under user picture here, um, you can put a picture of yourself in here. I've done so right here. If you want a picture of yourself, you can drag and drop in this little rectangle, easiest way to do it. Or you can click on the little square, uh, pick a file, and then upload the file. Um, there's a picture description here. Uh, you'll notice that I've put Charlux, that's my artist name. So I'm a musician, so I figured it'll go with the picture. Now under additional name, this is something that could be interesting. My last name is Rulo. It's a bit hard to pronounce for English people, so I put a phonetic way of pronouncing it, R-U-L-O as opposed to R-O-U-L-E-A-U. -E so it, if you have a name that could be hard to pronounce for people in North America, you can always put a phonetic way of pronouncing your name. Uh, you can also have an, an alternate name or a nickname, or if you have like a, an Americanized name, you can put that in here. Underneath that, we got interests. So again, if you're studying with like-minded people, you can see what people's interests are if you want to put them in here. Um, since I'm a musician, I put uh, music. I've also put uh, racing in here. So anything that you want, you can just type a word, press enter and keep typing words and pressing enter. It will give you a list of your interests. Under optional here, um, I've got a web page as an artist. So I put it in here. If you have a web page or you can put in there, you have Skype or Yahoo or MSN, you can put your IDs in here. Um, I've put Eastern Town Board School Board, Eastern Township School Board, sorry, I'm dyslexic. Um, in here, I've got my, no my phone number and the address of the school. Now, be aware that everything you put in here, everything is visible by everyone. So if you want information to remain private, don't put in here. And when you're done, don't click cancel again, you click update profile and I will basically bring you to your preferences. I don't know why it does that, but it's just to show you that we have a lot of preferences. There are blogs in here, you can start your own blog. There, there are user forums where you can talk and chat with fellow students and teachers. So you can set your preferences for all of that in here. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back up to the top to your name. And this time we're gonna view the profile. So we're gonna see what a profile looks like when you visit somebody else's profile. So just click on your name, select view profile, and you'll go to the profile page. Now, since this is my own profile, I can see four tabs here. 
including edit profile. But if you're visiting, visiting somebody's profile, you're going to see about me courses more, but you're not going to see the edit profile, of course, because this is not your profile. Now, later on, you'll be able to click on somebody else's profile. And what you'll do is you'll see their picture here, their name, and you'll be able to send them a message. And also, you'll be able to add them to your favorites. So if you click on a fellow student's name or a teacher's name, you can add them to a favorite and create your own uh, contact list within Moodle. And like I said, you can message people as well. So in here, you see about me, which is the description I wrote and my interests. Under courses, you'll see the courses that I'm either teaching or attending. So as a student, you'll have a list of uh, your classes in here. Under more, this is kind of an important field because again, everybody can see that. So if you've created some blogs, if you've written in posts, you've contributed to discussions, everybody can click on that and see what you wrote on any one of these platforms. So just be aware, everything that you post in here that you contribute is actually a shared experience. So if, if you write somebody a private message, that's private, but everything else is shared between all the users. You'll also notice that under login activity, it tells you when you registered to this site, as well as when you were last here. So as teachers, we can see that. So if we ask you, oh, why did you miss the class? And you said, well, I was busy doing something else. And we go in here and we see that you were actually there 20 minutes ago. Um, we're we're going to know you're lying. But also other students can see, oh, yeah, they were last here 35 seconds ago. So just be aware that this is always there and people can see that about you. Any questions in here? So far, so good? Good. Okay, now, the most important thing, we need to enroll you into your class right now. So to enroll you into a class, what you're gonna do is you're gonna need to find your class. So there are two choices. You can go to your English class. Some of you are registered for English class and some of you are for in, registered for French class. Now, if you're registered for French class or English, go at the very top underneath your name. There's a search field up here. Click on the search anywhere. And then if you are looking for your English tag, class, just type English, pretty simple. And then click on that little um, looking glass or press enter. If you're looking for the French class, you have to type francisation. Um, fran I'll try to write it correctly. And that would be a C. Okay. So if you're looking for your French class, don't type French. You're not going to find it. You have to write francisation. You can always go to uh, the main page and click on courses and, and French, but this is the easiest way to find it. So again, English for English classes and francisation for French class. It, again, that is F-R-A-N-C-I-S-A-T-I-O-N. Now I'm going to press enter. And this is going to give me all the list of all the francisation classes. If you typed English, there's, a, there's, a, there's quite a lot less, so it's easier to find it. I just typed English and you've got English conversation. You've got just three groups. Uh, the Francisation has a few more. So you should have received an email that tells you um, a few information. First of all, what level you're at. You can be level one, two, three, four, five, or six. And we have five different groups in, in French in here. Group one, two, three, four, five. Now it's important to know what group you're in and if it's um, a daytime class or a nighttime class. As well, we should have sent you the name of your teacher. So if you're in my class, for example, it's a night class, and I've got level four, five, and six, and my group is group five. Now, does everybody know what group, what level, if you're night or daytime? Does everybody have that information? And one of the most important information that you, you'll have been sent is this. This is the code. These are the codes for all the different teachers and different classes. Um, you'll need to know the code. 
And again, if you're having trouble with this, don't worry. You can stay afterwards and we're going to help you to um, go into your correct class. So let's say that I'm in um, my own class here. So all I have to do is click anywhere in here. And that will actually bring me to this. Now, this is not what you're going to see. I'm already enrolled, so I can see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop sharing my screen and show you the screen that you're actually going to look at when you are going to click on it. So let me just uh, share it. Uh, and da, 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 Sorry about that. Let's go here and here. So what you're going to see when you click on your class is the name of your class the level. You're going to see the name of your teacher. You're going to see an area that asks you for an enrollment key. Now that's the code that you need to put in. So it, for example, if you're with me, I think I'm 005, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Charles, yeah. If you're with Lorraine, you'd be 001. Nizan is 002. Uh, Alvin is 004. Gwen is 006. So depending on um, your teacher, you're going to put the correct number in here. I see a few faces that look a bit dubious. Are we all here? Good. I've got a few hands up. Good. Again, don't, don't be afraid to um, ask us if you have uh, questions or if you need help. Yep. I did enroll myself, but I don't think I saw these, the, the screenshot that you have on the screen right now. I didn't see that, but okay. I know I put in my access code of 005 and, you put and it I enrolled enroll? in the class. Perfect. And it worked. I just want to make sure I did it right. That's all. Yep. If you did it right, you'll go right back to uh, the screen here, but probably at home, you'll probably see this. So it just means it works. If it didn't work, the field would have turned red. So this would have turned a bright red and you would have seen that it didn't work. So when it's all said and done, you should be back on this screen here. And if you scroll down a little bit under my course, you'll have a block here that shows you the class that you enrolled in. Also, if you go, um, sorry, I just need to admit someone. Um, okay. Also, if you, um, if you go over my course here, it'll have the name of your course right here. So you can go to your own course quite a few different ways. You can click on my course and click on it. You can use the side navigation here, which has your course, and you can also see it on the block in here. So there's quite a few different ways to go to the same place. So go to your class by clicking on it and you should be presented with a page that looks a bit like that. Now I'll go through it because there's quite a few things in here. So we have the banner here that will tell you francisation or English. You'll have the name of your class here and it'll give you a bit of description of what the class is about. Uh, right now, mine is blank because this is a test page, but you'll have the name of your teacher in here, the contact information, and most importantly, at this point right here, you'll get the Zoom link to go to your class. Charles, you're still showing the, um, the other screen. Sorry? I... You're still showing the other screen that Thomas oh, is asking. Sorry, thank you about that. Um, let me just um, go back to this one. Is that the correct screen now? Good. Okay. So sorry about that. I thought I was showing it. So again, you see the name of the class, the, the number of the class, a little bit of discussion. Under teacher here, you'll see the name of your teacher, the contact information, such as the email. And again, very importantly, you'll have the Zoom link right up here to go to class. So. If you're actually, uh, let's say this is Monday morning, it's the, the, the class starts at nine, um, at 8.50, you're in the system, you just click on the link, you'll actually open up the uh, Zoom link to the classroom. Now, underneath that, we've got, in this case, announcements, uh, presentation of the teacher, and all the material you'll need. And then you've got these little blocks here. There's quite a few things in here. First of all, uh, plan match is basically telling you what the class is about, how it works. And um, 
resources are all the resources you'll need for this. So we'll probably put manuals there and, and pages that you can print out, links, videos, so on and so forth. Uh, it'll be different for all the classes, depending on what level you're at. Um, so all of these are little blocks that we use to put the things for you. You can upload things as well. We'll show you how to do that once we're in a classroom. But we can say, for example, fill out this for the, this questionnaire and send it back to us. And we'll, all the teachers will show you how to do that. This will change as we go along. We'll add more things. And also just to let you know, some of the things in there you will not be able to see until you progress to that level. So we might have, for example, the first exam will be there, but the other ones won't be there until you completed the first exam, for example. So we can adjust that as we go along. You'll notice here on the uh, side navigation, we've got all of these blocks. And if you click on that little arrow, it'll open up and show you what the content is. So again, it's another way to navigate and access things. Don't be afraid if it seems a bit overwhelming right now. Uh, once we're in a classroom, teachers will tell you exactly where to click, where to go, what to download, how to proceed. So we're never going to leave you alone. We're always going to hold your hand and show you where to go and where to click. Any questions? No? OK, so that's basically it for this uh, presentation. And I was trying to keep it uh, at an hour, and I actually succeeded, which is good. So any questions? Oh, I have one. Yes. Uh, come Monday, yes. uh, I started the class at 9 o'clock in the morning. Do I, where do I log in? Like, do I log in on the Zoom or do I log in on the uh, on the uh, Zoodle, Moodle? Or, I don't even know what it's called here. The, the <laughs> it's called Moodle. Yes. Moodle. Um, okay. Think of a cow, Moodle. So, um, yes, Moodle is basically like I said, it's your school. It's a virtual school. So, just as in you were going to a real school, you go to Moodle before. Uh, sorry, Moodle before you go to uh, class. So let's say at a quarter to nine on Monday morning, come in here. And again, the address is, um, you can probably see it up here, moodle.etsb.qc.ca. So if you go to this address, uh, you'll get here, you log in, you find your course, and you click on the Zoom link that will be displayed right here. That's the process. So Moodle, okay. find your course, click on the link, and you'll be admitted to the classroom. So during the class, uh, uh, this Moodle site, does it, is there any audio on it or is it just... Uh, no, the audio will be on, um, on Zoom. But there'll okay. be audio in a way because sometimes we'll have video that, to, that you can see. So it's just okay. like a real website. You can look at images, play videos, and so on and so forth. But so, the classroom itself is given in Zoom. Okay, so, if we're, so when we're in... Uh, I, I attached a Zoom via a uh, link. Uh, that was sent to me? This, uh, no, this, that's a uh, different one. The Zoom link yeah. that you sent this morning was just for this one. Uh, like yeah. I said, the, your Zoom link for the class will be in here, directly in, in Moodle. We also might send it to you an hour before the, the class time. So uh, we're going to see about that. I'm not sure about the process yet. But it will definitely be right up here under your course. So you just go my course, pick your course, course yeah. and it will be right there. So it will be the first thing on the top. Okay. So, I have, uh, okay, I don't see that here, but no, no, you're not going to see it yet. We're it's still in development. But come on. Oh, uh, okay. So it's not there at this point in time. Okay. Exactly. Good, good, good. Sorry. Like I said earlier, maybe you missed it, but this is under construction right now. We had to put this together mm -hmm. very quickly. So it. Hey, I, I deal well. I deal cakes. well with. Uh, yeah, I deal well with software changes. Yeah, I'm always happy with that. Perfect. So. That's it in a nutshell. That's the Zoom and Moodle. Um, if you have any questions, be, feel free to stay behind. We're going to help you out. Otherwise, that's pretty much it for now. Um, as I said earlier, we chose those technologies because they're fairly easy to use. And as you, as you use it, you're going to get more and more familiar and more comfortable with, with that. So um, don't be afraid if it's a little bit overwhelming. You'll, you'll, you'll get used to it very quickly. Don't forget, you can also click on people's name. Let me just go back to my course here. And if you need information about um, a, a teacher or you want to contact us, best thing to do is um, when you go to the courses, my name is not there, so I'm just going to find another one. 
I'm just going to go to francisation again. Oops, if I can type. Okay, so let's say that I want to get in touch with my teacher. Let's say it's Lorraine. So I click here. And when I click on her name, it automatically brings me back, not back, but it brings me to her, her profile. I can send her a message here. I can add her to my contacts. I can see what she likes. I can see what courses she's teaching. And I can see um, if she put some forum entry or when she was last here. She's actually on the site right now. So if I send her a message, she can reply to me. So if you, can, if you can't attend the class or something, it's a good way to get in touch with us to let us know I'm not going to be able to, to attend class today. Good. So I want to thank you all for participating in the session. Hopefully you've learned a lot. And don't forget, you're going to keep learning and you're going to keep, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You're going to keep um, being more familiar with this and more comfortable. So I thank you for being here. And I'm just going to show you very quickly how to log out um, of Zoom. You probably know that already, but just in case. So when you're ready to leave, you can click on that end button in Zoom. And that will ask you to confirm and we will take you out. You'll be able to leave the meeting. So for those of you that need help, just stay here. We'll, we're going to help you. And for everybody else, again, thank you for being here. And I hope to see you in class. So thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.